Hi, I'm Scott with Flex Your Rights. I want to talk for a few minutes today about an article I had published in Alternet last week called Five Ways to Avoid Getting Busted for Pot. It's, it's a topic, obviously, that we get a ton of questions uh, involving marijuana, and we hear from a lot of folks that get arrested for marijuana. So I don't want to give the impression that that's the only thing that we're concerned about at Flexi Rights. I mean, I think everybody needs to know their rights, not just people who, who use marijuana. But because this issue affects so many people, because our marijuana laws are as stupid as they are, and because they're in, enforced in, in such a such an oppressive way. There was so many people being harassed on the streets every day and, and searched uh, and coerced into waiving their constitutional rights. And with so many people being thrown into jail who don't belong there, I think it's a critical civil liberties issue and something that, that we have to confront as an organization that works to teach people how to deal with law enforcement and how to exercise their constitutional rights. So let's get to it. Five ways to avoid getting busted for pot. Number one, don't consent to searches. Now, uh, this is one of the most basic know your rights tips that I can give you in any context, but in the, you know, when it comes to marijuana, it's, it should be particularly obvious. If you have marijuana and you agree to a police search, you're going to get arrested for marijuana. I mean, you might as well just hand it over to them. And by the way, don't just hand it over to them. In case it's necessary to say that, don't give police your drugs. Don't give police the opportunity to search you for drugs. And if you have something that you don't want them to find, giving them permission to go looking through your things is going to get you jammed up. It's just that simple. You have a right to refuse searches, and if you're just minding your own business, police don't have the legal authority to search you against your will. So know and exercise your Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable searches and seizures. Item number two, don't let them into your house. It's your house. Uh, if you don't want police digging around in there trying to arrest you for stuff, then don't let them in. Police are great at convincing you to let them in, and they'll come up with some good arguments, and they'll make you feel uncomfortable. You know, what, are you hiding something? Or we just need to make sure that, that it's, everybody is safe inside. You know, they're great at that, but don't fall for it. The real reason that they want to come in is to, to look around, to sniff around for criminal evidence, so don't let them do it. And particularly uh, when it comes to marijuana, if you've just been smoking and a police officer comes to your door, the instant you open it, they're going to smell it, and that's going to give them probable cause to toss the entire place. So in, in a marijuana situation, you might not even want to answer the door. You're not obligated to answer the door for police, and so if you're in a situation where doing so could get you in trouble right away, I would probably recommend against it. Number three, ask if you're free to go. This is a really important trick when police officers are detaining you in a traffic stop or a street stop situation. When you've already refused consent to a search, uh, what the officers will often try to do is hold you there. So they'll say, well, we'll wait here. We're going to bring out the police dogs to sniff your bag and then see what happens. The reality is police can legally bring a, a, a dog to the scene but they can't legally hold you at the scene if they don't have some kind of, of legitimate evidence uh, to do so. It's called reasonable suspicion. So if you haven't actually done anything to give them uh, reasonable suspicion to believe you're involved in criminal activity, then they can't just hold you there until the dog comes along. But it's your job to tell them that you don't want to stick around. And so you have to ask if you're free to go. It's legally significant. If the officer says you can go, then get the hell out of there. If the officer then uh, instead as would often be the case, says, no, we're going to detain you, stay right there, fine. It's an issue that you can raise in court if you get arrested later on. But it's really important to actually verbally say that you're not agreeing to stand around and talk to police officers. So remember to do it. Just because they don't let you leave doesn't mean that it's not important and doesn't mean it won't help you. So remember to ask if you're free to go anytime you're in a tough situation with police officers. Number four, don't do dumb stuff in public. Now, I'm not saying that you're stupid or that people who smoke marijuana are stupid, um, but uh, I do hear about a lot of people getting arrested in stupid situations, and the number one thing is, uh, is just smoking in cars. It's ridiculous. You're letting plumes of, of smoke, which is probable cause, just spilling out of your windows. You know, the instant you get pulled over and the officer smells it, you don't have any more legal rights in that situation. You can't refuse a search. They can search you in your car automatically. So don't do it. And, I mean, really, if you can't wait until you get where you're going to, to 
smoke, you, you know, you might think about chilling out anyway. So, you know, be patient and don't put yourself in that position. I've, I've heard about too many people getting jammed up that way. I know it's fun, you know, if you're on a road trip or whatever to catch a buzz and it gets boring in the car, but don't do it. The consequences are too severe and police just, just prey on people in those situations. And the same goes for, for, for things besides just smoking. I mean, if, if you're out with friends who are drinking and making a lot of noise or causing trouble or throwing stuff, you know, just make sure that, that you're not drawing attention to yourself when you're out there if you've got something on you. Because a, a lot of the time when people get busted for pot, it's, it's, it's not because the officer just profiled them. It's often because something happened that drew the, the police officer's attention. So just be mindful of that. Be mindful of who you're hanging out with. And also, a really great way to avoid trouble is just not to bring anything with you if you're going to be in a situation that, that might, uh, might be noticeable to police. Um, so anticipate that ahead of time. You know, if you're going out drinking with some loud buddies, maybe just leave it at home. It's easy enough. And then the fifth way to avoid getting busted for pot is simple. Don't snitch on yourself. Don't admit anything to the police officers. Don't talk about it. Don't answer incriminating questions. You're not legally obligated to. It's your Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. And police are, are really good at tricking people into talking about this because it's so easy to pretend you're cool with it. I mean, a lot of people are cool with pot. And so when the police officer says, oh, well, we're just looking for weapons, you know, don't worry, we're not concerned about pot or anything like that. People fall for that stuff every day. But you know what? When they find the marijuana, they're slapping the handcuffs on you. So, you know, remain silent and don't be afraid to, to keep your mouth shut because if there's anything you should be afraid of, it's giving police information that can get you arrested. And so, so that basically covers it. And the only other thing I would add is to, to always be calm and be respectful when you're dealing with the officer. If you're panicking, if you're all nervous and crazy, you're talking really fast, your eyes are darting every which way, those are the kind of things that really make the officer suspicious of you. So, you know, the, the best approach in a tricky situation is to calmly and confidently assert your rights. Now, officer, I'm not agreeing to any searches. Officer, am I free to go? I'm sorry, I'm not answering any questions with, without an attorney present, but I know you're just doing your job. You know, just be nice, be calm, and it really makes a huge difference. You know, the worst case scenario, of course, is that you end up in court, and in that case, you need a lawyer. But if you've exercised your constitutional rights throughout the encounter, you've kept your mouth shut, you've said no to the search, you've asked if you're free to go, that uh, really increases your legal chances of, of beating the charge. So don't freak out about it. Things, you know, it's not over until you've seen the judge and, and your lawyer has fought this out on your behalf. And there's a lot of good lawyers out there that know how to handle these cases. So just remain calm, protect your rights, and, and hopefully you'll be okay. So that about covers it. Uh, put any questions in comments. And as always, uh, there's a lot more information on our website at flexyourrights.org. All of our videos are available on YouTube for free with various clips and, and various edits, so you can check all of those out here on YouTube. But if, if you're willing and able to, to support us with a donation, we're happy to send you hard copies of the DVD, and they're pretty cool to have. So if that's something that you can afford to do, we really appreciate it. But in either case, please enjoy all of our material. I hope you find it helpful, and please share it with your friends and family and anybody that needs it. Thank you so much. Be safe.